No, I had no idea there were people making snowballs in Australia. I knew of some, but like, yeah, they're not very, like, not very commercialised or anything like that, so it's, you know, it's hard to get your hands on them and all that kind of stuff. I'm a carpenter by day and a snowboard builder by night. I work six days a week as a carpenter. Um, and then I pretty much come home and build my boards. And then I go snowboarding on the weekends. Or oh, on Sunday, anyway. This is pretty much the uh, the shearing shed here on the farm. And um, because we only really shear for probably no more than two weeks every year. So it's pretty much nothing much goes on here otherwise. So it's not a bad place to uh, to set everything up and uh, and and build boards. There's a reason that not many people are, are building these things in this country. It, it's, it's hard work. When I realised that there was nobody else in, in this country doing it, um, to my knowledge at the time there was nobody else doing it, um, I, I was just amazed by that and I thought, I can do this and I'm one of the only ones in 26 million people who can do that, so that's, that was pretty exciting. Well, when I was in year nine, uh, back in high school in 2006, I, um, I, got, uh, I got given a school project. Um, general basis was that you could design, build anything you like. And um, when the project came, I built a snowboard and ended up with that. And uh, that's where it began. And um, pretty much as soon as, I, as soon as I had that one, I went, okay, I can do this again now. No worries. Um, I, I was living in Canada for a while and I kind of knew a couple of guys over there who built some boards and saw it firsthand and then um, found out where you get some materials and that from and crudely built our first press. Yeah, over the years I've sort of progressed and sort of built up a bit more equipment and same with, you know, the, the presses. The press has gone from a, a little old homemade press up to a pretty chunky, um, big heated dual cavity press that's um, probably as good as most presses anywhere else. I rode that board for four seasons and I didn't want, as you can see, it's quite busted and uh, I didn't care about that. It was it was my first snowboard. Um, it was the, the first one I ever made. I, there was a lot of love went into that board. That's what it is, it's a, it's a cherished possession. There's, there's pretty much one core material that goes into a snowboard that can be sourced in this country, and that's fiberglass. And even that, it's such a, such a rare grade of fiberglass that there's only one retailer in Victoria that sells it. Plastics are a completely different story. That all has to be imported. 
and in order to import that that stuff you have to pay the the custom charges the stamp duties all of that sort of stuff When we import our um, bases and top sheets and things like that, we've got to pay a 5% duty on our uh, materials that come in. But if we buy a, a fully made board from China for whatever price, you don't have to pay anything. That on top of having to source the stuff from people who speak different languages, and that, that sort of thing, it's, it's tough. So they're basically penalising Australian manufacturing to, to uh, make it cost more to build it here than uh, what you can import it for. A lot of people buy their boards online, um, so they just immediately go to the big brands because they know about it. With uh, like buying online, you don't get your ha the hands-on experience, you know, you don't, you know, it's like the whole warranty factor as well, you know. There's so many flaws into the online buying as opposed to going into the shop and, you know, try, like, you know, get your booty bindings on and stuff like that and actually, you know, get a feel of the board and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people just go online and think, oh, that graphic looks kind of cool, I'll buy that one. Whereas um, if you go into a store, you'll have someone tell you what's good and what's bad and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll play around with it and you'll end up choosing something completely different. Even if you have the same range of boards as what you saw online, you'll buy something different. If it's price, like, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be competitive. But if you're making a really good product and you can hype it enough, then I guess it could work. It just needs to be awesome. No, I don't know, it's always worthwhile to pursue what you want to do, whatever that might be, so um, absolutely. But um, yeah, it's, um, I guess my, my thing is just to keep making good boards and make them better if that's possible and uh, keep trying new things and building new shapes and, and uh, just seeing what happens. Um, no, look, yeah, it's it's something you um, you do because you enjoy it, not not to make money out of it for sure. Yeah, it's it's um, it's certainly no get rich quick way game or anything. Yeah. Ultimately, everything I do comes back comes back to the hills, um, and this this necklace that I wear says to live from mountains, and that's that's how I roll. Yeah.